Welcome back to my Jelly Prints project video series sharing lots of ideas and tips and tricks for using your monoprints. Now I thought we'd do something slightly different today and make a hybrid art journal page. So I've got lots of digital and non-digital techniques to share with you today. Now if you've missed any of the videos in the series so far then they are all listed in the description below. And if you're completely new here, then you might want to start with the first video in the series where I share tips and tricks on using a jelly plate to make your own monoprints. And you'll find a link to that in the cards and also in the description below. So what you're looking at here is a scan that I've made of one of my jelly prints and I've opened it up into Photoshop elements. Now when you're doing your scanning you could happily scan them at 300 dpi resolution and save them as JPEG files. I'm just opening up a new file and I'm going to do this A4 size and at 300 dpi ready for printing and then I'm just going to copy my jelly print onto that new file and resize it so it covers that whole space and that just sets up my printing file ready to go because the next thing I want to do is add some leaves to it because today's project has a bit of a floral theme and I'm going to be using the digital stamps that I've got available on Etsy so I have four flowers and this one's the dahlia flower and I've got to open one of the PNG files and this one's for the flower in its original size so the size that I first drew it at and this is the flower in its parts so the leaf and the flower itself are separate in each of my digital stamps you get the flowers and leaves separated like this or you'll also get them as a whole plant where the flower and the leaves are clustered together so what I want to do here is just separate the leaf out into its own space. So I'm just going to use the marquee tool in Photoshop Elements to highlight the leaf, then copy that marqueed area into a new layer. And you can either do this using the drop down menu at the top, shortcuts, or use the right button on your mouse. Once it's in a new layer, I make the original invisible so that it won't confuse us and then use the eraser tool to get rid of the marks that I don't want from the flower. I can then duplicate that leaf layer onto that new file that has my jelly print. And in the new file, I'm just gonna duplicate that leaf. I don't know how many leaves I'm going to use, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this whole page with leaves, and I'm going to also use different leaves from my other flowers as well, because I'm going to use a few of those different files. So I'm going to do that same technique for the anemone and the camellia as well. I might not use all of them in my hybrid art journal page, but at the moment I just want to keep my options open so I'll print them all out. And anything I don't use here, I can always use it in another project, so nothing's wasted. Once I've put all the leaves together like this, I'm also going to do exactly the same thing, but this time for each of the flower heads. But I'll use different coloured jelly prints for those. When it comes to printing out, I tend to set my printer to the highest quality that it will print at, and this will be different for the type of printer that you're using. But general rule of thumb, go for a high quality rather than your standard setting or your fast setting. The papers that I use are a mix between a good quality inkjet printing paper, but at a good price. So I don't tend to use the really, really top quality for this kind of work. I might use that more for any photographic work. But I try to use a paper that's going to take the ink really well. And I'll leave a link below to the papers that I'm currently using for this kind of personal project where it's just going to end up in my art journal. If it was going to be for art that I would then sell on in some form or another, then I would use a higher quality paper. Right, well, I know that after all that digital work, you were probably itching to get some paint on. So let's do the painting part of this art journal page. So I've mixed up a red and a white, very roughly on a palette, just a piece of plastic. I've tried not to overmix it because I want some variation in hue across the page and for the different tones to show through. And I'm applying it to my page just roughly again with a palette knife. And this itself is going to add some textures as well. And it's a really fun way of painting. So some areas it's going to be thin and some areas it's going to be quite thick. Now the other thing I'm using is an alphabet stencil and this is just an ordinary stencil that I've bought from a stationery shop or something like that, perhaps an art shop. I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember, but you can pick these up really cheaply and I have used it before so you'll have seen it in some of my other videos. It's a little thicker than you'd normally get in an art stencil as you're meant to use these for writing through rather than applying paint through them. But that thickness just adds to it because it gives a really lovely texture to the page. Now all I'm using is ordinary heavy body acrylic paint. 
and this paint is thick enough that it retains the shape of that stencil to add that dimension and texture. Now, if you don't have paint that's thick enough to do this, then you can always use a modelling paste or a heavy body gel and let the texture dry before then adding the colour over the top of that. Once that paint is completely dry, I will then spend a little bit of time trying to work out exactly where I want the flowers and the leaves to go. And in the end, I decided that I would only use three of the flowers. And I've gone with the dahlia, the camellia and the anemone. Plus their leaves and all the other ones that I printed out, I shall leave those for a project for another time. Let me know if you've enjoyed the video and if the going over some of the digital aspects has been useful to you. I would love to hear if you use computers and software for your art and craft. So do let me know and let me know what kind of projects you like doing and what kind of software you like using. If the video has been useful to you then please do like it and share it with your friends and if you're not one of my subscribers then think about subscribing too. I bring out new art and craft videos every week currently twice a week. So I hope this has given you a great idea of how to use your mono prints and get the most out of them as well. Now if you haven't got the facility to scan them or perhaps you don't have the time then I do have a set over in Etsy that you can buy and download and use in your personal projects. And you'll find a link to my Etsy shop in the description below and also in the cards as well. So the glue that I'm using to stick these to my page is just the regular gel that I like to use. And I know a lot of you will have seen me use this again and again. But glues that work with paper will work just as well in this project. And I'm only putting a little dab on the back of each of the pieces to hold them in place. So the flowers will kind of lift away from the page a little bit at the edges and that will just add another dimension. I really love how you can see all that detail and texture from those jelly prints in these flowers. It's just a really fun way of using your jelly prints and matching them up with digital stamps. It's great. And I'm kind of really pleased at the way it turned out. And the other thing I really like is that paint texture you get from the stencil and how that matches with the printed work as well. Right, I'll leave you with more views of the finished project. Don't forget to watch the other videos in this series if you've missed them. And I'll be back in a couple of days time with another idea to share for using up your jelly prints. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.